Here I am, laying down to sleep. No nightmare shall plague me until they have swum through all the waters that flow upon the earth and counted all the stars that appear in the firmament. This prayer, translated roughly from German, was once said before bed to protect against the infamous mare, a spirit or elf that attacks its victims while they sleep. Spoken of primarily in Nordic or Slavic lore, the mare or nightmare is a nocturnal being, only active when the world is dark and animals and humans alike are incapacitated in their sleep. Though the name might throw you off, the mare is not, in fact, a horse. It's a rider of horses and just about anything else. Farm animals, large and small, trees, and human beings. The mare rides. This seems to be its primary motivation, to ride in ecstatic glee and drain the life force of its mouth as it does so. A shapeshifter, the mare can transform itself into any number of creatures, all the better to disguise itself while in search of a new victim to ride. One of its favorite disguises is that of the night butterfly or moth. In this form, the mare is said to creep into bedrooms through keyholes or cracks under doors. Once inside, it transforms, sometimes into the shape of a goblin, but usually into that of a frightening woman with tangled hair and bulging eyes. With creepy, jerky movements, the mare will climb onto your bed while you lie vulnerable in his sleep, and then it'll sit astride your chest weighing you down with the pressure of its body. At this point, you will have become its mount, and the mare will ride you all through the night, draining you of your energy while you lie tormented by terrible dreams. If you wake partway through this horrific encounter, you may find yourself unable to move or cry out, which is why night terrors or sleep paralysis are said to be caused by this disturbing fairy. If you are fortunate enough not to wake during the experience, but only in the morning, you may feel that you haven't had any sleep at all and remember a fretful night in which you had a nightmare. But the truth is, you didn't have a nightmare. A nightmare had you. The mare targets both men and women alike and doesn't seem to have a preference between the two. Though it is known most often to appear in the guise of a woman, it is said to appear as a man as well. In this guise, in Germanic lore in particular, it's sometimes referred to as an alp rather than a mare. Signs that you have been attacked by this night rider include bad dreams, listlessness, tiredness, and unusually tangled hair upon waking. Indeed, after a night of riding a sleeping horse, which apart from humans is the mare's favorite target, the horse victim can be found with matted, knotted hair, and there will be no explanation as to how it could have come to suddenly be that way. These tangles are known as mare locks or mare braids. Twisted or tangled trees are also said to have been ridden by the mare, who twists everything it touches. There are several tricks to ward off a suspected mare attack, including plugging up bedroom keyholes and other potential points of entry, or placing a pair of shoes or slippers next to the bed and pointing the toes towards the door, getting into bed backwards or keeping a branch or broomstick in the room so that the mare might ride it instead of you. These and a whole host of other wards and techniques have been used to greater or lesser success in the past. But in truth, there are no guarantees with the mare, who cannot be truly destroyed or warded off, not forever. The best you can do if you find yourself in the mare's sights is hope its visits will be only temporary until it finds another sleeper to ride.
Every forest, no matter how ancient and gnarled, gives birth to the new. Saplings rise out of the earth, buds blossom on branches, fledgling birds, fox pups, and baby swirls open their eyes for the first time. There is a pair of peculiar old fairies known as Melch Dick and Churnmilk Peg, who watch over all in the forest that is young and new. The word Melch or Melch is an old dialect word for soft, tender, or unripe, whereas churn milk is a reference to churn milk nuts, that is, nuts in their unripe or pulpy stage. As their names suggest, Melch Dick and Churn Milk Peg are the protectors of all that is unripe and unready under the forest boughs. Melch Dick has been described as a short man about the size of a 10 or 11 year old boy. Dressed in simple clothing that is covered in moss with a cap of red squirrel fur, his age is said to be impossible to gauge, and from him exudes the scent of tree resin and sap. Melch Dick haunts the greenwoods of England, particularly those of Yorkshire. In the past, when children went out to pick nuts in the hazel groves, adults in the area would warn them, Melch Dick'll catch thee, lad! If any of them dared to disturb the unripe nuts this forest fairy has claimed as his own. One boy who survived an encounter with Melch Dick describes meeting a boy around his own age who appeared in the forest path and lured him with the promise of a captured squirrel to a secluded pond deep in the woods. There, the fairy played a hypnotic tune on a penny whistle, one that mesmerized the boy and seemingly all the squirrels of the forest. The squirrels were summoned to the pond and circled it in a weird procession. Fortunately, the boy was able to escape to tell his story, though other children have not been so lucky. It was once said that children who had gone missing in the Greenwoods were likely to have been taken by Melch Dick. But why would Melch Dick target children, you might ask, when his task seems to be to defend the young? Some have theorized that revenge drives this woodland fairy, a kind of tit-for-tat with humanity. According to lore, Melch Dick was once a good-natured fairy who brought gifts to the local people and help them with their planting. But he grew angry when humans cut down the young trees in his charge. While humans prize the life of a child far above that of a young tree, the fairies make other calculations. Churn Milk Peg is related in some way to Melch Dick. She may be his wife, his sister, his associate, or himself in a shape-shifted disguise. She has been described as a wizened old woman, short, squat, and completely mad. She sits in groves of nut trees, a wooden pipe hanging from her lips, her wrinkled skin, wild hair, and mossy attire camouflaging her amidst the bark and the leaves. But when a child comes along and picks an unripe nut, she leaps to life, shouting these two lines. Smoke, smoke, a wooden pipe, getting nuts before they're ripe. Then she attacks. It is said that Churn Milk Peg will drag any child she captures deep into the woods and then into the clutches of Melch Dick. It is unknown what these two do to the children they capture, whether they take them away to the fairy world and into a life of servitude and dread or to some other terrible fate. Whatever the case, it's best to avoid these hedgerow horribles by leaving the young things of the forest in peace. Some of the most famous and fascinating of all the fairies are the mer people, creatures that superficially look like us, but who live fathoms beneath the ocean waves. 
with the upper bodies of beautiful human beings and the lower bodies of fish or sea serpents, mer people occupy another world, one that coexists with our own and is filled with life, but is barred to us in any meaningful way. Stories and sightings of mer people are ubiquitous around the world. The mer people, whether mermaids or mermen, tend to interact with humans only rarely. Some brief glimpses have come in the form of a woman, swimming in the middle of the ocean, far from any boat or in sight of land. When sailors have spotted such a woman and attempted to rush to her aid, they have been met not with cries for help, but with a wave and a giggle. Then the woman dives under the water while a large fish tail flips above the surface. Some stories tell of a beautiful man or woman walking or singing by the sea, perhaps lounging under the sun, only to vanish behind a rock when spotted. A splash and a tail flip later, and the creature is seen swimming out to sea. These stories suggest that people are capable of surviving both underwater and on land. Indeed, it is said that people can strip their fins from their bodies like clothing, and do so occasionally to wander about on rocky shores. In some stories, humans have stolen cast aside fins and then married the mer person to whom the fin belongs. But marriages like these are no better than prisons to mer people who will always be searching for their lost fins so they can return to their true homes underwater. Like the sea, Mer people can be beautiful, enticing and mysterious, but also dangerous. Mer people have been known to drag humans down into the depths to drown them, or to lure boats to smash against rocks with siren-like music or false lights hovering above the water. Though it could be that such incidents have been accidental, a kind of cultural misunderstanding between our two peoples. Perhaps the mer people don't realize that humans can't survive underwater and haven't been trying to drown anyone only to show them around. It may be that the siren-like songs and floating lights are not meant to lure boats to deadly rocks, but are simply how the mer people communicate or signal to each other over distances. But like other types of fairies, it is likely that the mer people can be both dangerous and kind depending on who, when, and how you meet. Whatever the case, the sea runs deep in the veins of these underwater creatures, and so does its dangers, its silvery beauty, and its moods. And so, as mesmerizing as they can be, it's better that these cold-blooded creatures remain to us a mystery. tingle up your neck, a chill down your spine, we've all felt it, that unnerving sense that you're being watched, that there is a presence in the room that you cannot see. Residents of haunted houses know this sensation well. In fact, it's often the first sign that others may be sharing a space with you, unseen. In Japan, these otherworldly watchers have a name, the Mokomokoran. The Mokomokoran are a type of yakai, supernatural creatures of Japanese lore that are similar to the fairy lore of other parts of the world in their bewitching and calamitous nature. The Mokomokoran appear only as eyes, eyes that stare, eyes that watch, Eyes that move and follow through rips or tears and paper sliding doors. Common in Japan, paper doors, or shoji, can become tattered and ripped over time, delicate as they are. And if they're not regularly repaired, they may attract mokomokoren, disembodied eyes that gaze through tatters and watch the residents within. 
Mokomokarin are nocturnal creatures. During the day, their eyes remain closed and blend in completely with the rips in the wall. In this way, Mokomokarin may go unnoticed for days, months, or even years if the house is abandoned or little used. But by night, the eyes open and stare, following human residents in all their nighttime activities. As creepy as this is, the Mokumokurin have usually been described as harmless, for they have never been known to do anything other than watch. There's even a tale of a gutsy traveler who actually plucked the Mokumokurin eyes from an old door and then sold them to a local eye surgeon. He came away unharmed and a little bit richer, and yet darker stories do exist. In one tale, a man who tried to ignore the Mokumokurin by covering his eyes while he slept, woke to find his eyes had been taken from him, yanked from his eye sockets and missing forever, perhaps now stuck in some ripped paper wall. More so, the presence of Mokomokaran is often a sign that a larger haunting may be underway, that behind the staring eyes are other, more monstrous forces that should not be shrugged off or ignored. Invasion by prying eyes into intimate and private places has, after all, been characterized as an assault in itself. And the lore of the Mokomokaran may hold an important warning for those of us in the present, who may have become overly accustomed to the eyes of cameras staring at us night and day out of our devices, that behind these seemingly harmless eyes, more sinister forces may be at work. Fortunately, there may be a simple solution to these invaders of private places. If you don't want to be watched by strangers, supernatural or otherwise, repair your paper doors and cover your cameras. Footsteps in the dark, creaks in the floor, giggles from the shadows, the jab of a long finger unseen. These are all signs that your house has attracted the maniacal presence of Mum Poker. Mum Poker is a goblin, and like all goblins, he is attracted to chaos. Homes where tumult and turmoil reign supreme, where there are frequent shouting matches, Wild or unruly children, or disorderly surroundings, are a perfect lure for this mayhem-loving monster. Mum Poker has never been confidently described, for he is almost never seen. He's thought to be a shapeshifter, or else capable of an invisibility or camouflage, blending perfectly into the shadows and dusty corners, and under stairs or in crawl spaces where he can live holed up for long stretches of time. When Mum Polker emerges from his hiding spots, it is only and always to do mischief. His favorite pastime is to poke, prod, and pinch, and pull and tangle hair. In fact, sudden sharp smacks, poking, pinching fingers from invisible hands, might be your only sign that Mum Poker has taken residence in your home. This goblin is stealthy able to roam about your house as quietly as a cat. This ability is in part where he's earned his name. Mum here referring to silence, the silent poker. While his antics may sound at worst annoying, his ability to cause serious damage should not be underestimated. Mum pokers pokes and pinches and tangles and slaps, while themselves not dangerous, can terrorize a victim keeping him up late at night, making him believe he's going mad, or even causing potentially dangerous accidents like falls downstairs. To make matters worse, Mum Poker particularly loves to target young children who may not be believed when they complain to parents about the invisible fingers that keep pinching them awake in the middle of the night. Mum Poker has two brothers, 
Tom Poker and Hodge Poker, who behave just as badly as he does. If your home ever attracts Mum Poker, hope it's him alone you have to deal with and not his brothers, too. Altogether, these three have been known to cause poltergeist like pandemonium so severe residents have been forced to flee their homes. Keeping a house peaceful and tidy, with children who go to bed on time without a fuss, is said to keep Mum Poker and his brothers at bay. Although, like other goblins, Mum Poker and his brothers sometimes act as foot soldiers for other more powerful fairies. And so, if one or all three of these sinister pokers has been unleashed in your home, despite a peaceful and tidy environment, it may be that you angered a powerful fairy who is taking revenge. Exorcisms are the only things known to get rid of goblin home invaders, and so it's best not to attract them in the first place. Keep your home calm and clean and your children well-mannered, and if and when the opportunity should arise, never, never cross a powerful fairy. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon who are helping to produce this content. I really appreciate you guys and the support you are giving this work. That was entry M in the Scary Fairy Bestiary. If you have any requests for fairies you'd like to see featured in future bestiary entries, leave a suggestion in the comments down below. Or you can write me by filling out the form on my website, scaryfairygodmother.com, link also in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your fairy stories, your fairy experiences, or submit comments, questions, or suggestions. You can also sign up for my mailing list there. It's free to sign up. I'll send out occasional, very, very occasional sneak peeks, updates to the website, uh, that sort of thing to mailing list subscribers, and probably a sample of my upcoming novel uh, when that's available. So if you're interested, please fill out the form on the site. Please also leave a comment down below. Do you think you've encountered any of the fairies on this list? Do you have a favorite one or are there fairies I left out that you'd like to know more about? I'll be in the comments for the next hour or so responding to your questions and comments. If you like this content and would like to support it, please check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother. <laughs>